The ASRock Desk Mini is the best mini PC on the market today, and has been my go-to for systems that don't need a dedicated GPU. Stay tuned to find out why. In late September 2020, ASRock introduced a new Desk Mini based on Intel's H470 chipset. The biggest difference with the new H470 chipset is that it uses 10th gen Intel CPUs. Thanks to AMD, Intel has finally had to up the core counts on their CPUs. I could do an entire thank you video to AMD, but that's it's really the consumers that win. AMD's Ryzen CPUs have started competition that give us better performance. This i3-10-100 outperforms i7s from just three generations ago, before AMD had released Ryzen and become competitive again after a decade and a half of futility. And the cost of those i7s were over $300, and this i3-10-100 runs $120. I also find it funny to see 8 CPU threads in Device Manager with an i3, and I've also built a system with an i5-10-400 and found it comical to see its 12 threads as well. It's always great to get more CPU cores, and while I'm a little skeptical about the cooling, the new H470 ASRock Desk Mini supports the i9-10-900 with 10 cores and 20 threads on a computer that's about the size of an ATX power supply. It'd be pretty specialized to have an i9 without a dedicated GPU, but it's still impressive nonetheless. Now let's go do an unboxing. You can see they've updated the packaging. The new one looks much better. And I'm going to get the old one out of here since I'm just going to focus on the new one. Opening up the box, you'll see that right away you have a Wi-Fi kit with an M.2 Wi-Fi card and antennas. You have two SATA breakout cables, and I can show you how these are used here shortly. Next, you have a bag of rubber footies and screws for the system. Then a driver's disc and a, an owner's manual or user's manual. I've already taken this one out of the plastic bag, but here is finally the bare bone case for the ASRock Desk Mini. Comes with motherboard case and power supply for a retail price of about $180 on Newegg right now. That is a cost raise of about $25 from the old one, but with the new Intel CPUs, it's probably worth it. And there's finally the power brick. The biggest cosmetic difference that you'll see right away is this faux brushed aluminum on the front, which is really plastic. But it does look a little nicer than the old one. And I've already got this one built, but uh, you can see that it looks pretty much the same as the old unit aside from the front. And let's go take a look at a side by side. So this has been my go-to case for over a year on systems that don't need a dedicated GPU. People are still shocked at the size and performance of these things. Side by side, you can see they pretty much look the same. It's basically the same case made by Inwin. You have the side USB and audio connectors which are sold separately. I'll knock ASRock a point for that. Turning to the back and looking at the IO shield you can see that you still have the three display outputs VGA, HDMI, and DisplayPort. Um, and now you gain two extra USB 3.2 ports and a second USB-C port. Uh, that was one of the knocks, drawbacks of the old case was the lack of USB ports. Uh, let's go ahead and open this up and take a look inside. Now, as you would imagine, these cases are pretty simple to work in. Um, you know, it's not like many ITX systems of the past where you had all kinds of cables and stuff, especially now with M.2 drives and everything that doesn't really even need cables. There are just four screws, one in each corner of the case, and you remove those four screws, and there's an entire motherboard tray that will slide out. Now we've got my four screws out, you just flip the case over and grab this tab that's on the back by the I.O. shield and the whole motherboard tray with the motherboard and everything inside will slide out, leaving just the front panel connector for the power button and the LEDs on the front. I will go ahead and open up the old version, the one based on Intel's H310 chipset, just to do a quick side by side. And you can see everything on the inside looks pretty similar too. You still have two RAM slots, which support up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. And one thing I really like is that the, even though it uses laptop RAM, it has a desktop style connector. So the same desktop style clips, you just slide your RAM stick into and push down and they snap into place. Uh, it does use stock Intel heat sinks. Whether that's a good thing or not, I'll let you decide. The VRM heat sink did change from to the back from the side on the old case. 
um, again you have your M.2 slots in the same spot and actually right underneath the M.2 slot the 2280 slot is on top and underneath there is a smaller 2230 M.2 slot for the uh, included Wi-Fi kit and there it is the M.2 Wi-Fi just plugs in to the bottom slot and then your M.2 SSD plugs in right on top now turning the case over you can see that there are two spaces for two two and a half inch SATA drives and that's where that SATA breakout cable comes in it plugs in right up here to the motherboard header that's on the bottom of the board and the other end goes to your SATA drives so you can definitely add a decent amount of storage alongside your M.2 SSD and the what's new is those actually support RAID 0 and RAID 1 on this version that does lead me into my next point so let's go ahead and fire this system up and take a look into the BIOS or I guess more appropriately called UEFI setup these days um, and you can see that a typical ASRock standard it goes to this easy mode but if you flip over to the advanced mode you'll see that this thing actually has a very full featured BIOS especially for a small system of this size and now in the advanced mode you can see that you have your UEFI version and processor and memory information on the main page clicking over to the OC tweaker you can do some block overclocking but you have you know good setup of your CPU a lot of features that you would not expect to see controls for in a BIOS of a system this small and you also have a lot of RAM options you can basically control all of your RAM timings and switch to XMP and even do some RAM overclocking uh, again, these voltage controls and things you weren't really expect to see in a system this small, it's just nice to see that you don't have to make any major compromises to go with such a small form factor case in, anymore. It used to be that you had to use low power processors or even laptop processors and cooling was an issue. A lot of those issues seem to have been solved. I do change the share memory because it does seem to, when I have 16 gigs of RAM in a system, it tries to share much more than I would prefer to the graphics um, storage controller we don't really have any SATA controls so it doesn't really matter M.2 does its thing pretty much automatically and you can see our NVMe storage our 500 gig Western Digital Black shows up there uh, USB you can even do an XX, XHCI handoff if you have a reason to do that um, there are some nice options for trusted computing and then even a TPM control which I'll get to here shortly uh, again good to see in a case this small just in case you have any theft concerns or anything like that um, ASRock tool page still has their secure race utilities their UEFI update utilities um, easy RAID installer where you can set up the RAID 0 or 1 on your SATA drives uh, instant flash as well which is nice because you can do that over the network CPU fan controls, I'm going to change that one to silent. And then you do have a second CPU fan header if you wanted to get creative with trying to put another fan in there. I'm assuming it's just something ASRock left on because it was easier to leave than take off. Uh, here's the security I wanted to mention. Intel now has a platform trust technology, so Intel PTT is uh, basically a cheaper way to do um, a TPM style um, hardware verification for security purposes and that would also tie in with your drive encryption if you wanted to have a little more security in case you had any theft concerns and finally we have a full featured boot menu just like I said it's what you'd expect maybe not necessarily in a system this small but from a full featured setup it's got everything you'd want and that's gonna do it for this video hopefully I did a good job of spelling out why exactly it is I love this system so much uh, hopefully the new packaging the new update means ASRock is going to dedicate some resources to this uh, I think they really have a winner with this case and hopefully you guys agree with me any uh, questions or comments be sure to leave them down below and as usual thanks for watching